So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. Movie number four, what are we going to do to keep things fresh? Well, that's a good question, because at this point in massively popular franchises, movies risk drifting into this kind of self-plagiarism, you know, where they're going through a checklist of moments that people come to expect, and the characters become parodies of themselves. Yes. Right, right, right. Right. <laughs> so how do we avoid that? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, fair right. enough. So we're going to go all in on Jack Sparrow, right? And there's a magical uh. thing going on. Some pirates are undead. Oh, sense. heck yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of sword fights that aren't based in physics at all. There's a young couple that fall in love. Sounds like a pirate's movie to me. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what exactly happens in this thing? Well, we're going to meet up with Jack, right? And he's trying to save Gibbs by pretending to be this judge. Oh, he is? Yeah, but he's still got his eyeliner and his gold teeth, so it's very funny. So not only only does nobody realize that he's not this judge, but they also don't notice his extremely piratey features. Exactly. Somehow they don't, but eventually they're gonna get caught because their getaway driver had accepted a bribe, so he drives them into custody. If they knew there was a getaway driver and they knew who he was, why didn't they just stop them at the courthouse? Unclear. So then Jack has to meet <laughs> King George, and he's upset because there are reports that the Spanish know where the Fountain of Youth is. Oh yeah, Jack was looking for that at the end of the last That's movie, right. wasn't he? He was, and he came really close to finding it, but then he gave up. Oh. So King King George wants Jack to guide a ship that's led by Captain Barbosa, who's working for him now and missing a leg. He's from the other movies. <laughs> he sure is, sir. But then Jack does that thing where he does a bunch of wacky stuff and escapes. He wasn't <laughs> chained up. He was, but the chains were making too much noise, so the king had them removed. Okay, yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so then Jack's gonna go to this place where oh, somebody's whatever. pretending to be him to recruit people for an expedition. <laughs> right. And it turns out it's this beautiful woman disguised as him, and he used to have a romantic thing with her. A beautiful woman was dressed like him and interacting with people and nobody noticed? That's what we're going with. <laughs> wow, disguises are extremely effective in these movies, huh? They Apparently. sure are, sir. So eventually Jack's gonna find out that she's actually Blackbeard's daughter and he ends up on Blackbeard's ship. And what's Blackbeard's deal? Well, he's got a zombie crew and a sword that makes his ship go fast when he points it. What's that all about? Oh, we're well past explaining that kind of thing. <laughs> That's fair, I don't know why well, I asked. So well anyway, past. there's this prophecy, right? And it says that Blackbeard's gonna be killed by a man with one leg, so he wants to find the Fountain of Youth. A prophecy? Yeah, sure, a prophecy. I don't even sure. care anymore. Isn't the Fountain of Youth's whole thing <laughs> restoring people's youth? Why would it help prevent a murder? Well, sir, because of magic, it's mm. also helpful for murder prevention, is what I seem to have written here. <laughs> oh, multitasking fountains are tight. But the thing is, to get the Fountain of Youth to work, they need to get their hands on a mermaid uh. tear. Why would the Fountain of Youth need a mermaid mm. tear to work? Because I thought it'd be pretty cool to have some mermaids in the movie. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, and also they need these two chalices and one person has to drink water out of one of them with a mermaid tear and the other person has to drink water without a mermaid tear. Okay, so that should be enough objects for them to have to find and fill up some screen what? time. Exactly. So then the person <laughs> that drank the mermaid tear gets all the years the other person has lived plus any years they would have lived if they hadn't drank the thing. So who figured these very specific things out? Some humans a long time ago, I guess. <laughs> they just happen to be drinking water out of two chalices, one of which had a mermaid tear in it. Sure, I don't care. So then they get their hands on this mermaid named Serena, and she has this instant connection with a missionary uh, that Blackbeard had on his ship. Why do they have an instant connection? Well, they're both attractive. Gotcha, and so they take one of her tears and they go to the fountain? Well, they have to carry her along with them. Why? Because the tears have to be fresh. That's part of it. So that means somebody attempted it with a mermaid tear that wasn't fresh and then right. identified that that was the problem, and word of that somehow reached these pirates. That's what we're going with, because or else there's no reason for them to bring a mermaid along with uh, them. Fair enough. Man, it's super helpful for these stories that hyper-specific magic with yeah. very vague backgrounds is a thing. Very oh, vague. You have no idea. I'm using magic to explain everything. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Wow. So anyway, then at a certain point, both Jack and Barbosa are trying to steal the chalices that the Spanish have, and they're gonna get captured. Why don't the Spanish just kill them? Unclear. Huh. So then Barbosa reveals he doesn't even care about the Fountain of Youth. He just wants to kill Blackbeard because he took the Black Pearl and made it tiny. What? Magic. <laughs> gotcha. So wait, Barbosa doesn't what? really want the Fountain of Youth, and Jack doesn't really want it, but he was roped into the whole thing. Yeah, and right. Blackbeard and his daughter just want it because of the prophecy, and the Spanish just wanted to destroy it in the name of religion. And the British only want it because the Spanish want it, so none of these characters actually really want the thing that they're all racing towards no. here. Yeah, no, not really. The protagonist was kind of just dragged into somebody else's adventures, and everybody's kind of evil, so it doesn't really matter who gets there first. <laughs> That's right. So what part of the story are people supposed to care about? Well, there's that love story between the missionary and the mermaid. So people are going to care about that? Oh, I seriously doubt it. <laughs> Jack Sparrow's in the movie, so it's going to make money. That's a good point. So anyway, back to the story. Jack and Barbosa have to figure out how to 
to escape, right? That's gonna be hard to do as prisoners. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, with the rope around him, Jack starts to climb up the palm tree he's tied to. Don't the guards see him? <laughs> no, cause see, they tied them up to trees pretty far away from the camp with no one guarding them. <laughs> oh, people in this movie are very bad at taking prisoners. Uh, they sure are, sir. So Jack manages to get to the top of the tree. How does he get the rope around the top oh branches? God. Oh, we're gonna cut away for a second when he's doing that, so don't even worry about how he did that. <laughs> oh, great. And then since Jack Sparrow with some rope is still basically Spider-Man, he's gonna grab a tree and tie a bunch of bad guys together and escape. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So then eventually everybody's gonna end up at the fountain, <sighs> right? It's like some kind of big fountain party. Ah, like the Friends intro. Kind of. Yeah, <laughs> but no, not at all. Okay. And so the Spanish are like, guess what? We're gonna destroy the chalices and wreck this place because only God can grant eternal life. Why'd they wait until now to destroy the chalices? Dramatic effect. Gotcha. And then there's gonna be this okay. big fight and Barbosa's gonna end up stabbing Blackbeard with a poison blade and Angelica's gonna get cut too. Oh, very exciting. And then that mermaid pops up with the chalices for herself? no apparent reason and Jack fills them up and offers them to Angelica and her dad. Okay. And Blackbeard's gonna selfishly drink the one with the mermaid tear, but then Jack is like, actually, I knew you'd do that, so I switched them. Very clever. <laughs> yeah, so then Blackbeard dies and Angelica's wound <sighs> heals up. So the fountain also heals wounds? Yeah, it's magic, so sure, okay. <laughs> sure, okay. Sure. Oh, and also that missionary guy is hurt, and so that mermaid kisses him and drags him to the bottom of the ocean, which is somehow helpful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm not really attached to them either, sir, but we need a young couple in love. That's the formula. Fair enough. And so then Jack drops Angelica off at this That's deserted island with a gun and a single bullet. Oh, and her hands are tied? Actually, Jack is like, I'm fully aware that you got out of your restraints half an hour ago. So how come she doesn't grab the gun and point it at him? Unclear. So then Jack gets on a boat and leaves while she's all upset. And she doesn't make any effort to get on the boat. Isn't she kind of invincible now because of the fountain? Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, listen, sir, I just want to sideline her without killing her in case people like the character and we can bring her back. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so that's about it. What do you think? Well, it doesn't really feel like any characters have grown or changed or that any of this has had any impact on anything. At all. Well, yeah, that's about right. Well, that's all right with me. We should definitely shoot this in 3D, though. That's all the rage. We could use those avatar cameras. It sounds expensive. Yeah, it shouldn't be too expensive budget-wise, although I guess Johnny Depp is going to cost a lot. Oh, yeah, this might get out of hand. Oh, my goodness. So it would seem I found another film that I watched perfectly through a pitch meeting because I have not seen this movie. I think I saw one scene when Blackbeard, Penelope Cruz's character, and uh, Jack Sparrow were on an island or something. Maybe it was the island where the uh, Fountain of Youth was. I saw one quick scene of that and I was like, oh, no, I'm good. I, one, I wanted to watch it from the beginning, but I just haven't seen it and I haven't really sought out to see it. I don't think it's on Disney Plus yet. Um, I know the, like, the first three movies are. I don't know if the last two are, even though I've seen the fifth one, but I haven't seen uh, really, really seen the fourth one and I'm, I'm okay with that. Based on how this movie showed, it didn't even matter in the grand scheme of things as far as the overall story. The fifth one was actually pretty good. I liked it. I mean, it's not the best. I like it better than three, but uh, this, this one, I'm kind of glad I missed it. So this is how I'm going to experience uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. That's how I'm going to experience this one. Have you seen it? Did you enjoy it? Is it in your top, I don't know, Pirates movies? I mean, there's five of these things and they're about to do a reboot. So where do you kind of put it amongst all of the Pirates movies? Some people I saw enjoy this one. So uh, it kind of surprises me because it feels like it doesn't do anything for the characters of the story. Just the way that Ryan said it here, or producer guy said it. <laughs> Screenwriter guy's like, oh, oh, well, yeah, that's it. You're right. He didn't have a rebuttal because he doesn't even care. And it's funny to see how they changed out the couple in the fifth one because it's a different guy and girl, I believe, or at least guy in the fifth one. It's not that same dude from the fourth one. I don't know if the mermaid shows back up or not. Can't remember if that was the case. It's been a while since I've seen that one. So I guess it was kind of forgettable. I don't know. But overall, very funny stuff. I enjoyed it. He brought the I don't care back in this one. He said it a few times, so that was pretty funny. And it, it, it makes sense for this one because it does seem like it's just, uh, hey, we need to make this movie, so let's just do whatever we want and let's put it out there. So this is what we ended up with. Look for a poll again, though, of which one's your favorite of these pitch meetings. Uh, again, I think the first one might be the best. I think the first one is still the best one. If I'm thinking straight, the first one is still the best pitch meeting. And overall, really good movie. Now, the second one's still my favorite. Like I keep saying, De Dead Man's Chest is still my favorite of the Pirates movies, but 
pitch meetings, first one I think takes it. So uh, I'll still do a poll. You can choose which one is your favorite of these four. We'll kind of go from there. Thank you subscribers, members, and non-subscribers for watching. And hit that like button before you go. I really appreciate that. It helps the channel out. To Brian Tidwell, Steve-O, Slepnir, and Kasik 13 thanks so much for choosing the hype recruits here. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys are helping out in a big way. To all my members and subscribers, thank you guys so much for watching again. While you're still here though, check out some of our most popular videos on the channel. You can also see our most recent reaction right up there if you've seen all that. And I'll see you guys in the comments when we can talk about this.